a lot of what I don't like about this device has to do with its So guys, today I'm going to share some of my thoughts about the Pixel 7a, why it's worth getting, and some things which I didn't quite like about the 7a in the time I spent with this device. Now, if you found value in this video and you want to see more, click subscribe and tap the bell button to stay notified for more videos from me. First, to put things into context, this is every bit a budget device in terms of hardware if we compare them to the flagship Pixel 7 Pro and 7. But compared to its predecessor, the Pixel 6a, we are seeing some substantial upgrades, especially in the camera department. Now the rear camera shoots 16 megapixels with a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera instead of 12 megapixels on both the Pixel 6a's lens elements. It's now capable of recording it up to 4K on all the cameras, both front and rear. And in terms of software, this is a lot closer to what you get with the flagship devices. Now, since it's got the flagship Tensor G2 chip, snapping pictures with the Pixel 7a is faster even when using night sight. I mean, it feels just as quick as the Pixel 7 Pro. It also comes equipped with flagship camera features like Magic Eraser and Picture Unblurred. Now, those features are awesome. Magic Eraser allows you to make anybody you don't want in the picture disappear like photo bombers or simply people you don't like. Stalin would have loved that feature. And with Picture Unblur, you can sharpen blurry images, including the ones you took long ago. Damn, that looks so young. Now, if you want to learn more about those features and what they can do, watch my Pixel 7 Pro review. I've got the link in the description box. But when shooting pictures at the fixed focal lengths, both wide and ultra-wide angles, pictures shot during the day look very good. Well-exposed sky, decent dynamic range, and colors look very accurate. Now, pictures shot at night look well exposed as well across the frame, but not to the point of overexposing artificial lighting, which is great. When shooting landscapes, it does tend to have a bit too much yellow in the greens sometimes, but apart from that, I'm very happy with its color contrast. But instead of having up to 30 times super res zoom like the 7 Pro, the 7A only has up to eight times due to the difference in camera hardware since it doesn't have telephoto. And somehow, its super res zoom isn't as impressive. I mean, it doesn't seem to be as sharp at eight times super res zoom, even compared to the 30 times on the Pixel 7 Pro. Could be the fact that the flagship pixels can use the full 50 megapixel sensors by default without pixel binning, whereas the 7A Pixel bins is 64 megapixel sensor to 16 megapixels by default, which impacts resolution. However, when shooting videos, it does now shoot up to 4K on all the cameras, both front and rear, with the rear cameras being able to shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second. And when shooting videos, the footage looks well stabilized, even in low light situations, plus it's got impressive mic pickup too, with great noise reduction, and it was able to isolate my voice very well against the background. Okay, this is the Pixel 7a. I'm recording at 4K 30 frames per second. I'm walking and as I record, seems like stabilization is looking pretty good. Let me just head over there and do a quick pan. Again, 4K 30 frames per second at one time zoom. Also pay attention to how well the mic is picking up my voice. The water is looking very murky today, isn't it? Yep, that's Singapore's rivers for you. I'm just going to turn the camera around. Okay, so this is the front selfie camera. It's recording at 4K, 13 megapixels. 
in terms of stabilization it's looking pretty jittery i hope the actual result is better than this also pay attention to how well it's recording my voice oh i should probably pull this down yeah pay attention to how well it's recording my voice versus the sounds of nature by the way guys this is the dyson zone headphones and air purifier unit i thought it's a great opportunity to train my shamelessness I think my shameless score has just gone up. Someday, I might even become a cosplayer. I wonder what my mom would say to that. So without walking, it's like this. I think it looks pretty good. Very bright and sunny day today. Yesterday, it was overcast. But today, it's bright and sunny. In terms of audio from the speakers, there is a speaker on each end of the device. It's loud enough that you can hear your content in a noisy outdoors situation. And its quality is quite acceptable if you're not fussy about sound. But if you're a bit more fussy about sound like me, the speaker sounds thin and boxy in the vocal range. Plus, there's little to no stage separation, so if you're playing games or watching videos, it's not gonna sound cinematic at all. Purified air to your nose and mouth using a visor that clips on with magnets like so and makes you look like a certain Batman character No one cared who I was till I put on the mask It doesn't support Dolby Atmos either, so if you want anything close to your immersive sound, you definitely want to use earbuds. And if you use earbuds, it also lets you customize the EQ of the audio using the sound amplifier app. So it's your choice whether you want to make it sound more bassy or bright, more laid back or aggressive, entirely up to you. And it helps that V7A does support codecs like LC3, and even the more popular high-res codecs like aptx HD and LDAC. Because if you're an audiophile, you might want to use this as a wireless streaming source. So what do I like about the 7A then? Well, for its price, it's looking like great value for money if you want a very good camera in a budget phone. To me, it's not just about color accuracy, smooth, natural looking images, those things are important, but it's also what happens after you shoot the image. With features like photo unblur and magic eraser, it's a very different experience from other phones. These are tools which are baked into this device itself that lets you enhance pictures without needing to use other apps. Another reason why you should get the Pixel 7a is the software updates. Now, this is stock Android. And when Google rolls out new software updates and features, Pixel phones will be among the first to get them. Very important because this also includes security updates. Its thermos are manageable when using the camera feature for extended periods. It does tend to get hot eventually, but when doing other things like gaming and watching videos for long periods of time, it gets warm, but not enough to make me wanna put down the phone for a bit. Its battery life is pretty decent. I mean, I did get a full day's usage from this device, even with the outdoors shooting. And at the end of the day, I had around 30% battery left. So in short, excellent camera, stock Android, decent thermos, and good battery. 
these are reasons to get the Pixel 7a, but the camera is like the biggest reason. But what are some of the things I don't like about the Pixel 7a? Well, yes, I do feel that its screen is very smooth and snappy, right? But it feels very dated because it only has full HD plus resolution, though it's possible to push this to 90 hertz for certain apps, this will definitely eat into its battery life. And under direct sunlight, it's not very bright. You do need to push the screen to your maximum brightness for it to be usable under direct sunlight. I didn't get any specs about its screen brightness, but this looks a lot like 700 nits peak brightness to me, which is so so. One thing I will mention is that when shooting pictures and video, the colors can look a bit more saturated on the phone screen compared to the actual results of the picture. Its underscreen fingerprint sensor works, but not all of the time. Very often it fails to register the tip of my thumb, and I often have to fall back to entering the password or using face unlock, which is a lot faster. And finally, what I also don't quite like is its screen to body ratio. That bezel around the screen makes this device look very dated compared to other budget devices. So a lot of what I don't like about this device has to do with its screen. And if that's all I'm looking at, I wouldn't buy the Pixel 7a. But if I don't want to spend too much money, but I still do want to shoot great pictures and video with great mic pickup, stock Android experience, first to receive all the updates, I'll definitely go for the Pixel 7a. But what do you think? Leave your comments below. So that's my take. Thanks for watching. And by the way, guys, I've got links to the Pixel 7a in the description in case you want to check the latest prices on Amazon. And if you want to watch more reviews from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. Wow, making videos every day is exhausting, so smash like and share to refill my HP. I'm also on Discord, so if you have Discord, come and join the chat. Link is in the description. Now, if you want to watch my review of the Pixel 7 Pro, Google's flagship device, click on this video over here or watch another video from this channel.